All right, so let's get to the debate. This is what people want us to break down this freaking nonsense. So, so Nico, you've been Ooh, here many times. I can't, I can't see you guys. So anytime you want me to stop, you got to give me a verbal cue. Stop, hold it up right here, and I'll stop the video. Here we go, gentlemen. Special edition, I'd say. Island friends. Not only is it Crystal Kyle and friends, it's also sort of like a dual thing going on. We got Brianna Joy Gray in the house, and this will be on her channel as well, the Bad little, Faith Podcast. Little crossover episode. Little crossover episode. Love that for us. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Looking forward to it. So uh, we're going to discuss Cornell West's campaign and everything around that. And uh, I just want everybody in the audience to know, because I don't know if we've said this publicly before, mm. that like he's been invited on multiple times and he just hasn't come on yet. And you know, this goes all the way back to when he launched. Mm -hmm. yeah. We invited him on. He hasn't come on yet. You know, will he eventually? I don't know. You know, it's up to him. Ball's in his court. Uh, yeah, but and we had him on before. We had him on before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before he announced his campaign. I mean, we're going back to when the People's Party thing launched. Right. We were we invited him on oh, all the way okay, back then, okay. too, and just haven't heard back or anything. But I just don't want it here. And so I want to lay out what my position is, and then, Brie, I'll turn it over to you, and you can respond to it. And, Crystal, sure. you can jump in at some point and tell, say what your position is. <laughs> we'll go is. through all the things. So let's, we'll go through all the things. <laughs> So uh, here's my first of all, in the pr Democratic primary, because I'm a registered Democrat in New York, I will be voting for Marianne Williamson. Very happy and proud to say that I'm one of the I'm the chief Marianne Williamson bro out there. <laughs> I'm leading the charge. Um, now, in New York, I'm going to well, imagine saying that. Shit. I, I thought it was going to be right right right. yes. the recent imagine debate. Not being embarrassed saying that shit. I'm still here. I, just, I had to step out away for a second, but I'm still here. I can hear everything. But imagine being that fucking absurd. That you say that shit on your channel without being embarrassed. <laughs> like, Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, shit. Oh, man. I thought, like, I was like, hold on. I thought this was a new debate. <laughs> Agreement with him on policy. And I think it would be nice to get the Green Party in a position where if they become more viable because we get ranked choice voting or something, it'd be nice to grow their popularity a little bit. And when we get ranked choice voting, I think they kind of automatically become a lot more viable. So I'd like to help out in that process. But we're, when, if I'm in a swing state and it's Biden versus Trump, I'm at the point now where I don't even think it's a tough call. I would definitely vote for Biden because so, either in quick, that I'll situation. Say, I'll, say real quick. I'll say something real quick. So, and I made a tweet about this that had a lot of Bernie bros upset. Like people overestimate rank choice voting. To put, it, to put it simply, you guys know that ranked choice voting got Eric Adams elected? Yes. yes. And countless neoliberals? Do you guys know that in many states that have ranked choice voting, if you don't rank every single candidate, they throw your ballot out? Yes. Let me repeat that. If you do not rank every candidate, they will throw your ballot out. That means that there are people in New York, that there are progressives that were forced to vote for Eric Adams. This is why ranked choice voting is trash. And especially in this application in the United States, because it doesn't eliminate lesser two evil voting. So once you vote for your third party, they they get rid of the third party votes for the second for the first round. Guess who voting for Joe Biden next round? You are. Exactly. And, and people forget, <laughs> like at the end of the day, when it comes to election integrity, bro, like I don't give a damn at this point. We're talking about special. We're talking about federal elections. Like I don't care if you're talking about ranked choice voting. Who's counting the ballots? <laughs> if, if you're the Democratic <laughs> district. Yes, we go. They're counting the ballots still, bro. Like, the, have we addressed these, these proprietary voting machines? No. In other words, like, proprietary means they're private, privately owned. We can't get access to them until, like, all those lawsuits across the country where they said Trump, he, they, if the courts believe he had a case, it would have failed. That's not the case, actually. He had to sue for an audit that they were not allowing. But, like, auditing our elections, which should be automatically audited, by the way, like, and they weren't allowing it. So, like, whoever counts the ballots is going to determine the outcome of elections in situations such as these. And until we have a way to hold to deal with that, like I don't give a damn. You're talking about who third? Like first of all, Kyle would not. Kyle wouldn't give a shit about ranked choice voting. It's just like a little. Oh, if you if he was doing that, I would help. Like, but like at the end of the day, it's just an excuse. Yeah, uh, and to that point, yeah. um, they'd love to do this. And this is an example I thought of when I was when I heard this part, where when they go, oh, ranked choice voting, then on there, that's that's Ukraine's Crimea. That's yes. getting a point that's <laughs> never going that's to be accomplished. Point. So <laughs> now, if we do that, more guys. Oh, oh, late, oh, late, late. What? Oh, oh, it's it. over. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. That's that's yeah. what that is. And that was a great point. And he knows it. And he knows it. But go ahead. Guys. Hey, well, let's continue. Else, we, or we can get back video. to the video. All right. All right. Let's get back to the video. Situation. Even if other people are running, either the Democrat or the Republican is going to win. 
And in my estimation, Biden has definitely passed what I would describe as my bare minimum purity test. Oh, and Jesus I think Christ. if it's nah, him or Trump works. or even him or DeSantis or anybody, <laughs> he just blows them out of the <laughs> water. And so works. I think I'd happily. I, he says if it's him or Trump or Trump, Trump and this or him and DeSantis, Biden just blows him out of the water. Now, this is this is the part to me, to your point earlier, Nico, it doesn't this is not a logical change in your rhetoric. You don't mm -hmm. go from saying Biden is terrible. I wouldn't vote for him under any circumstance because of the Iraq war to saying he's yes. by far. You get what I'm saying? You would just say, if I'll hold my nose and vote for him yeah. because I don't want Trump. You wouldn't be saying it the way that he's saying my it. bare so minimum why, purity test. Right, bare minimum. So, and somebody else said this. If your expectations for Biden was zero and then he, he does zero, isn't he meeting your expectations? Yes. Oh yeah, uh, that's, that's a good point. point. But like, also my my first of all, my my expect expectation for Biden was to be worse than Trump, and he's absolutely met my expectations. <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah, if yeah. I'm being like if I'm being 100, like I'm not gonna keep it like I'll keep it a band with y'all. Like, when you start when you start sending money to neo Nazis as a black man, that's probably my fucking line right there. Like, okay, yeah. what are we even talking about? You just show me you're willing to do anything, <laughs> literally anything. After that, like, of course you're doing that. And my brother sending money to neo Nazis. Like, oh, shit, he just busted up a strike. He sends money and weapons, and nuclear weapons, by the way, to neo-Nazis. Well, I'm not surprised by anything you do after that. So Kyle is lying by omission, right? Remember, that's what they, they love to do. Because I saw that clip. I didn't know this uh, until I saw this on Twitter, where, uh, you know, the Kyle versus Kyle video, where they said Kyle, at one yeah. point, he said, I would never vote for someone who was complicit with the Iraq war. Yes. So then he says, in this clip, that by meeting my bare minimum uh, 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 limit test or whatever, purity test, test, whatever, whatever, purity whatever, purity whatever purity the term is, right? <laughs> but what he doesn't tell his audience is that those changed. You're not telling your audience mm. that you should. I used to care about the Iraq war, but I don't care about the Iraq war. That would be him being honest. He's not being honest because he's omitting the fact that his standards changed in order to fit in with the Democratic Party. He wants people to think that these always left principles. These are the principles that, left, that leftists had. These are the principles that he had. It's something that he's purposely misleading his audience on. He don't want his audience to see the Cal versus Cal video, CJ. He don't want his audience to think know how much he changed. So he keep doing this thing. Like, yeah, this has always been about bare minimum. No, he hasn't. <laughs> That's why I got his hair blind. So y'all talk about anyway, his hair you... changing instead of his fucking political advocacy. You <laughs> talk about it like, damn, look at that ugly ass hair. You're like, fine. maybe if you do that, then so you I won't ask him. Like, oh, hold on, hold on. For... I ahead, hit this ahead, button ahead. accident. No, I hit it accidentally. Go ahead. I was saying, like, maybe if you look at how ugly his fucking hair is, you won't be looking like into how horrible he's like his transition has been. Because like, he, I'm always one of those people. Like, it's one thing if you hold your nose up and vote for a candidate, but like, my rhetoric and my ideology has always been the same. Right. That has not changed. What I care about, what I talk about, what I care about is not does not change uh, based off of the candidate that I'm supporting at that time. If I am supporting one, and that's not the case with Kyle and Crystal, and that's what's most disingenuous. Oops. Or Jill Stein in New York in 2016. I did the same. Um, and I also happen to believe that strategically it makes the most sense to apply pressure to the Democratic Party by voting for not Biden in a primary. Marion Williamson is obviously the most progressive candidate in the primary. And then vote for Cornell West in the general. Man. And I know there are a lot of people in my audience who are frustrated by that plan because they think that it takes something away from Cornel West's run, or it affirms the Democratic Party in some way to vote for Marianne Williamson running as a Democrat. I don't feel so. It sounds like Bree is getting pushback in her own audience for that strategy of voting for Marianne Williamson, which oh, is a good crazy. sign. It's a good sign to me <laughs> that, so that the audience way, is saying. I feel it's I mean, a our audience is not fucking stupid. I mean, I don't... <laughs> yeah, which is a good sign. <laughs> given that we all. All just enthusiastically voted for Bernie twice in the primary the last two rounds. Um, you can make a distinction saying that Bernie was an independent and he always identified as an independent and Marianne Williamson doesn't have that kind of cloak of distance from the Democratic Party. You can say what you want. I don't, I don't see those things as mutually exclusive in the least. So that is also my plan. I differ from you only insofar as that I would say it's, diff it's a more difficult choice in a swing state to decide mm -hmm. what you're going to do. But I frankly respect people who feel so let me i gotta say this it is not more difficult it's not 
you know who, you know who you know who this is more difficult for in a swing state the professional managerial class yeah this is only this is the only group of people where this is excruciating oh, i'm in a swing state ah you know what I'm like that's this is what they're doing ah, yeah. ah, like this is what they're doing no it's not it's very easy it's very easy you vote for the person you want and you walk out doing a george jefferson it's very easy <laughs> Hey, yeah. what you got to bring with the with the exorcism eyes going on with the party? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have no idea how much I envy people who live in swing states. Me too. Like, this idea that it's a hard I choice. wish. Man, oh, man. I wish. I live in Missouri. What I do does not matter at all. Like, I, when people say that I cost by an election, I'm like, I want to say that, but that's factually untrue. No, you don't. You don't envy that shit. Nick, I'm telling you, bro. Listen, I live in Florida, right? And it's that's not a, just a swing state. Like that is, that is like the swing state. That and is the bro, swing state, I've yes. never gotten so many text messages, like oh, so much shit. mail, <laughs> phone calls. Like, bro, I don't, I don't know how many times they say fuck off. Like, and, and I don't know how they find your number. Well, I know how they. So Bernie gave our fucking numbers away. So that like they so they give you they got their number. The Democrats got their number from Bernie. I actually never got a Trump um, uh, text, which is probably gonna never support a Republican. But like. You don't want to live in a sweet state, bro. It's annoying as fuck. It is literally because everybody, <laughs> most of the time, most people, a lot Had of times, like, Iowa. I oh man, but they like that shit, bro. It's like the most attention <laughs> Iowa gets ever. Yeah, like, yeah. they're in the primary and they're in the general, but like it, New Hampshire, same thing. New Hampshire, like they have a whole thing where you go. Like we went to watch the very first vote in the country being cast, and it is a law. You have to cast the vote. Yeah. Like, you have to be there. So like, but like living in a sweet state, like Florida, no, nah, it's just annoying as hell. Because everybody's like trying to argue with you in this political conversation. Like, I don't mind the conversations, but when you go into a bar, bro, and the first thing you have, like, somebody finds out you talk about politics, and that's all they want to talk about because it's a swing state. And there are some people trying to change their mind still, but like, it's the political machine just invests so much in annoying the fuck out of you. It is just too much. <laughs> yeah, I'll put right. the video back. Uh, the yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I just hit it too. It might go out. All yeah, right, so let me play it. Let me play it. Um, feel comfortable. It has not been something that I have to contend with, but I respect people who feel comfortable voting third party, even in swing states. And the reason is this, and it goes back to that early bad faith viral Noam Chomsky interview in which I asked him about a month before the 2020 race. Look, I said, I take your point. Let's say Trump is an existential threat. Let's say that he's a unique threat among all Republican candidates. My concern is that every year, because we all vote for blue no matter who, because most Democrats vote blue no matter who, or most left-leaning people do, the message that gets sent out is that Democrats don't have a bar. You can go as low as you want, as close to the Democratic Party, as you, uh, Republican Party as you want, and there's a ratchet to the, to the right effect. And Republicans know that they can keep being more and more extreme. And so I want you to explain to me what you predict to be the stopping point at which we're no longer be, we're no longer saying in. this new republic and this is the question that they never can answer nick and nico they never address okay i'm fine let's make a deal like let's say radicals us radicals go to to the progressive let's make a deal we'll join board we're going to do this this is the deal as long as you give us the last time we're going to do it give us the year not 2024 2025 okay we give you eight years okay we give you five more years 2028, they can't give us anything because they know that is the yep. ace they're going to be using every four years. Every four years, DeSantis, the next four years, Tom Cotton, the next four years, who you know, whoever. That's what they're going to do. Now, yep. I mean, before you get back to the clip, I'm going to just say real quick, because she mentioned her debate with Noam Chomsky, which I think was a solid W by Bree, by the way. Yeah. Uh, because no matter if you have a lot of respect for Noam Chomsky or not, you guys got to admit, mm -hmm. this motherfucker said some things that aged terribly. One thing I, I he has said, <laughs> but one thing that he said that aged terribly was that no matter how you feel about the war crimes, all this other stuff that Democrats do, you got to vote for Democrats because of climate change and the climate crisis. Uh, and Joe I Biden bombed the Nord Stream pipeline, <laughs> approved the little project. He fracked. So that's like one of the worst Noam Chomsky takes of all time. And that's why Bree dismantled him in that debate. But let's continue is the worst that ever, has ever happened. This new Republican is the worst that has ever happened. Tell me you're not going to be saying the same thing about Robert Davis or Vivek Ramaswamy or yes. whatever other person comes down the pike. And he was unable, in my subjective view, to respond credibly to that claim. So if somebody could 
could tell me strategically what the stopping point is going to be of making this argument of the lesser of two evils, I would be open to the idea that, okay, this is the last one. Donald Trump, fine. He, he tried to steal the election, fine. That's, that, is a, that is a new line that he has crossed. But absent an acknowledgement that we are creating our own destiny by lowering the bar in these ways, I'm not comfortable coming out and criticizing anybody who no longer wants to be complicit in that kind of a system that's enabled the Democratic Party to mm -hmm. not have a primary, treat Marianne Williamson as, bad as badly as they've treated her, mm -hmm. treat Bernie Sanders as badly as they treated him, and openly come out and say, and say they don't have to hold a, a free, fair election. The DNC argued that in court. You know, so let me explain a little bit of my position. I think that'll help respond to some of what you said there. Um, and I'm also curious to dig in a little bit more to your analysis of how the Biden administration has actually been in reality. So. So I'm going to tell you, Crystal Ball, in this interview, you literally you can hear if you listen closely the privilege in how she speaks. You can hear the nature. You can you, hear you, the you conversation. Don't have to that <laughs> you just heard it right there, Nico. You just <laughs> heard it where he's been in reality. You know what the problem yeah. is? White women, what he say? She said <laughs> white housewives or white like suburban moms aren't like Bernie isn't focusing enough on white suburban moms. That's what he that's what he said. And she said it about Bernie. She said it about, I'm like, did you just say, if anything, I can make a legitimate argument that all Bernie gave a fuck about was white suburban moms. Yes. Like, yes. If we're going to be real about the shit. Like, Absolutely. So it's not, you don't have to listen that hard. You can hear the, the fucking <laughs> $80 million or however much she's worth oozing out of her fucking mouth every time she talks. It's, it oozes so much out of her mouth that it is now in Kyle's hair. It's dying. It's bleaching. <laughs> <laughs> it's dying. All right. But you can hear it right here and then I'll let it play. But you hear it right when I play it and then and I'll let it continue. You said there. Um, and I'm also curious to dig in a little bit more to your analysis of how the Biden administration has actually been in reality. So last election oh. in 2020, I did live in a swing state. I in lived reality. in Virginia. I still live in Virginia, registered in Virginia. And it did not feel good to vote for Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. But I decided uh, yes, it did. to vote for yes, Joe it Biden, did. which is something I said publicly at the sorry, time. Sorry, sorry. But... I said something very similar to you, which is like, listen, this was not easy for me. If you, wherever you live, swing state, not swing state, et cetera, you do whatever you analyze is the right thing to do. And the reason that I voted for him primarily at that time, even though I thought he had an atrocious record in the Senate, even though, you know, complicit in the Iraq war, complicit in bad trade deals, complicit, you know, like terrible things on crime, all that stuff, right? The primary reason I voted for him was because of the National Labor Relations Board and because oh labor politics Good and Jesus building Christ. out union power in this country, to me, is one of the most important goals and something that I think we all share. No, what the reason you keep hearing is because I remember, Nico, you said, I don't know why unions have become uh, important all of a sudden. It's because the profession, this is what the professional managerial class does. They go mm -hmm. and study. And then they go, I have the answers to the questions now. So they went and study and said, oh, we have an answer to, to sell people, a new answer, a new shiny object. And it's called unions. Look at what's happening with unions. As if the Democratic Party hasn't co-opted unions. You yeah, get what I'm saying? Like, like as wow. if teaming with the Democratic Party, even with unions, is not a good idea for the workers. Also, what, no most of the time we're talking about unions. Where do the unions primarily reside? People keep seeming to forget this. Unions primarily reside in blue, no matter who states anyway. Like, and people keep forgetting that. Like, unions at large are usually being busted up in swing states because if they, if Democrats were consistently good on unions and unions were consistently helping those people in in, in places like Michigan and Ohio, why are they swing states? They're swing states because unions haven't really been helping people in those states because a, a large segment of those populations used to be union. And some of them still have like some semblance of a union. But like it is like Michigan is nowhere near what it used to be. And when it, it when it did, when unions were solid and you could count on your union to fight for you against politicians rather than the leadership selling you out, then those states were solidly blue. You, you know that because a lot of the, the state itself is blue, like all the major cities and shit still are still blue. So like. You them making this argument about oh what about you know unions yeah man fucking but they've been riding a goddamn union train since the the beginning of the last election. These same people, yeah. these, these same people will nowhere be found at Worker Strike Back. I was there. Nowhere. 
No, I gave a speech at work at Stripe Diet. So and they gave an excuse you guys understand, the there's, there's a very important role that la the labor movement plays in increasing the quality of life for the average person. And the Democratic Party had nothing to do with that. <laughs> the labor what game. The that we got, about Amazon? What has what what Biden or the Democratic Party said or done significantly about the, the people trying to get unionized across the country with Amazon? Like, what have they said? And not they, they um and this is why it's absurd that Crystal give Biden credit for unions because not only do you have the obvious fact that he broke the rail strike, you have Biden that broke one of his campaign promises, Bernie not holding him accountable for this, where he gave federal contracts to uh do uh Amazon despite their efforts to bust the Amazon union. So you have Biden awarding union busters the way he always have the same way he have union busters on his infrastructure advisory board. He he hired uh. This person, uh, actually, he had he hired this person who wanted to privatize water, but he also hired his, a, another oh, person man. on his advisory board, where they were extremely anti-union. They had work with uh, with Core Civic in New York to help bust uh, union efforts in that city. So the Biden administration had uh, they continue to reward people who are anti-union, who engage in anti-labor practices. Yep. That's why it's kind of insane that Crystal was giving them credit here. The same way it's it's crazy when you guys hear Cal. It's either in this video or another one I'm thinking of where he he gives Biden credit for Afghanistan. I'm like, you guys are so audacious. <laughs> you guys are taking negatives and trying to turn them into and a making positive. them positive. So Crystal yeah. is taking yeah. a absolute negative, which is Biden's record on labor, and now she's trying to twist it to a positive. Any socialist, any, you don't have to be a socialist. Scratch that. Any worker. To see his lack of solidarity, his scab behavior behind the rail union, and that alone will be enough to stop them from supporting Biden. Let alone but he took a picture Biden. with some union leaders once, like two years ago. So, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> General, yeah, 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 yeah. what are you talking about, Nick? Now in retro. And one quick, one more thing, I say real quick, and I'll continue yeah, yeah, the video. My bad, my bad. We have labor leaders on our show. We had them in our most recent labor summit. We had them at the. Uh, the General Strike Summit. We talk to people in labor and CJ. What did they tell us? They blame the Republican and the Democratic and Party. Democrats, Every single union. I have, we we haven't had one union person on where shit got awkward because they started praising Democrats. And you, <laughs> <laughs> Every single union person we had on was like, "Yeah, nigga, the Democrats is a problem. The Republicans are a problem. When you talk to the workers, they are the problem. But if you talk to Crystal." Look at this. Look at what they did here for unions. No one gives a shit. And this goes back to what I said earlier before. Unless you see a change in your life that comes directly from the, from the policy, you don't owe them the support for some hypothetical shit they did. Right. So that's what they, they're talking about a hypothetical thing they did for you and that's supposed to help your life. Unless you feel it, you do not owe their support. Period. He, that's how I feel. He, he's referring yeah. to the Brian Grimm's right. tweet. Apparently, he made some change in policy that could potentially lead yes. to increased union membership. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not Nico, sure we're gonna get to that. I got oh, okay, it set bet, up, and bet, I got bet, I got bet, your bet, reaction. Bet. I got you. I got your exchange with him all saved because yeah, that's no. ridiculous. That nigga always coming in. Cap, <laughs> how does he get the? How does he Bro. get the best signal from everybody? <laughs> any any squad member, but yeah. you know why? That book. He yeah. knew I have to make sure their image stay real. a certain level so that I can sell my book. It came yeah. all. It came all to fruition. See, I can't believe that book that is point. real. When I first saw the image of his book, I thought that shit was. Yeah, I, thought I, thought it was, was I thought it was. I thought it was so imperative. What Ryan Grimm would do. <laughs> that shit yeah, is real. Was real, was real book. Book. <laughs> Squad in the hope of a revolution. Some bullshit. That's unbelievable. Goodness. Anyway, goodness. Ryan, grown ass man, Ryan, political fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Not only do I feel good about that vote, he's actually surprised me. Now, I've got all kinds of issues, right? On the National Labor Relations Board, though, specifically, they just issued a ruling, which could be a complete game changer for unions. And just to explain to people a little bit, basically, in the past, bosses could union bust with impunity, no accountability. Now, the process going forward is completely changed. If bosses are caught union busting, then that's it. There's no more election. It's canceled. Mm -hmm. They have to recognize the union and start bargaining. Who determines that it's union oh, busting? What? Who determines yeah. that it's union busting? Also, uh, haven't they been union busting, busting and nothing happened? Yeah, exactly. It's not the same yeah, thing. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, but let's see if, let's see if she further explains. Let's see if she uh, well, further she explains. Because she says she explains it. I'm like waiting for the fucking explanation still. Like. <laughs> 
But I think, but Kyle also chimes in a, in a little bit and trying to give yeah, uh, her out here. But let's hear yeah, it. No with that. That's the biggest shift in labor relations we've had in our lifetime. So that's why at this point, I'm not only, you know, it's likely to, I'm a Marianne supporter as well, but we can all see the most likely outcome is it's going to be Trump versus Biden. We told y'all. What would I say Pause. that protecting. What did we tell y'all? What did we tell y'all on RBN? You guys thought we was being mean. We told you, you guys, what? Marianne Wilson and her supporters are Democrats with an extra step. These motherfuckers are Biden voters <laughs> with the yeah. step in between. They want to get a little opium started. They want to get a little grip. They want a little money from the movement first before they vote for Biden. We told you guys, you guys well, thought we were mean. And like then people are getting it. They got to like they gotta, hey, they gotta at least pretend to be like outsiders. Like if you come out Biden, for Biden from the back, like, but also like what outside of what this, this, this rampage, she goes on about sick care, which I guess technically is true. Like Mary Williamson isn't really better on a lot of the issues. Like exactly. when, you, when you get down to the crux of her solution, like she's not really better on it. Like she still wants to go and send troops back to Afghanistan. Like yeah. she's still like anything that you think she's good on, you can just talk her out of it. I can't believe she just admitted <laughs> that, though, CJ. Do you yes. mind going back ten seconds so she can set up part again? No, I, I knew this was one of the parts. I knew this because was one I didn't of the hear parts. Because part, there's only like two minutes. I, I, I'm like, wait, what she just say? Because she just admitted as a Marianne Wilson supporter, they just doing a little pet project. She even <laughs> says, so. "Yeah, I know. I, I like Marianne Wilson, but let's be real. She's not." She's not Come on, man. we just doing this. Shit. Come on. And, nigga, we just, and if we're being we just, real, real, we just, have, we, just have, we just want to meet at weddings, nigga. We just trying to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with it. I cannot believe you said that. If we don't keep it a band, band, like, like, band, like, like if, if 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 we're if we're gonna be real about it too, like it, it isn't looking. If we're being like, now obviously, I don't believe that the electoral prize is legitimate. But aside from that, if we're gonna be completely honest about it, it ain't looking like Biden gonna make it. First of all, it ain't looking like yeah, yeah. It, it's like that game was running against him. Now speech is something else. But aside from that, RFK actually is the only candidate. It looks like he can legitimately beat Biden if the elections were legitimate. So to say, it's like my I have my problems with RFK, but that does not mean I I will be like I'm not gonna like pretend like I'm okay with democracy being stolen from anybody. I, I'm I'm just I don't if I don't believe in I, my once again my my values and my ethos and my pathos are not determined by who I'm supporting at the time, and by her doing that. That's once again another way because I, I, I got a problem with Brie doing it. Brie did that at the beginning too. While she's basically trying to pretend like RFK wasn't running, when like, okay, y'all keep pretending like he ain't running if you want to. And then when he's a problem later, I don't want to hear about it. he's the reason that Biden lost or he's the reason that so and so lost. Like, because they're already rigging it. But like, you when we when you start doing that shit, like, how can anyone take you take you seriously? If I was an RFK supporter who might have considered voting for Biden, and I'm watching this, I'm like, what the fuck is this people? I'm not about to give any credence to this going forward. And they don't, but they don't care. Like I would, I would vote against Biden be petty. Like that's that's these type, of, <laughs> these type of discussions. Like if I was considering it, these type of discussions are what drives me to be like, you know what? I'm just gonna go back to Florida and vote for Trump because y'all motherfuckers <laughs> be lying. Y'all don't want to lie about Trump. Like yeah, but y'all don't want to tell the truth about him in a way that actually matter. Obviously, like the things that he actually did wrong. But like y'all don't want to. Y'all will say whatever you say about Trump and then just lie and lie and lie and t try to convince me that I'm full of shit and I'm an idiot and I didn't see what the fuck I know I saw the last, not four years, 40 goddamn years. That's the shit that be pissing me off. Don't insult my intelligence, bro. Facts. And let's get back to the video. For more election, it's canceled. Mm -hmm. They have to recognize the union and start bargaining with them. That's the biggest shift in labor <laughs> relations we've had in our lifetime. So that's why at this point, I'm not only, you know, it's likely to, I'm a Marianne supporter Whoa, as well. How did she just we jump like that? The most likely outcome is this. What is she, how did she go from, yeah, this board did some things and that's like the biggest jump in views in our life. Whoa, hold yeah. on. Why I'm confused. Did I miss something, Jay? Did we skip something? Well, I, uh, no. no she she made that conclusion. Because I, I, I was going to say this earlier, but I didn't want to stop it. But she said this was the largest jump in labor relations that we ever had. That's one of the mean lists. That means absolutely nothing because yeah, labor been nothing. crunched the last 20 years. Right. That means literally, that's something to mostly manipulate her audience. Right. Well, and she wants you to reach that conclusion, even though if you're a critical thinker, if you're a smart, smart leftist like us in our audience, we hear her and we like, how do you make those two conclusions based on the first thing you just said? Based on yeah, Biden's bro. history and record on labor, based on what she he broke the road strike, he he undermined unions left and right between not only just giving federal contracts to LAU, LAU, he hired multiple union busters in the administration. Multiple, mm -hmm. multiple of them. I cover them, I cover that in my one of my hotspot videos. So she lined by, by omission and she hoping that she cultivated a dumb dumb left, like she's trying to, that won't know that. 
right? Yeah, but anyway, she, we she, unless you want to chime in, Anika, we can continue. No, I'm saying she just it's, that's Ben Shapiro levels of logic leaping. Like that was crazy. I'm like, motherfucker, did I fall asleep for the whole ride? How did we get here? Yeah. Like, <laughs> or did they? Is this an edit? Is this like a, a <laughs> edit? What is this? <laughs> All right, let's get back, guys. Let's get back. Let's get back to it. That's the biggest shift in labor relations we've had in our lifetime. So that's why at this point, I'm not only, you know, it's likely to, I'm a Marianne supporter as well, but we can all see the most likely outcome is this going to be Trump versus Biden. Not only would I say that protecting the Biden National Labor Relations Board is important enough for me to vote for Joe Biden, but it is important enough that I would actively encourage, I'm not going to shame them for whatever they decide to do, but I would actively encourage people who are in a swing state to vote for Joe Biden, if for no other reason than to protect that board. So I think that's a perfectly defensible position. And I had this conversation on my podcast in the last episode, and there were people who would characterize that position as, I mean, you've heard the thing, you've been on the internet, uh, you know, being too credulous about Biden or, you know, being too comfortable in one's own position in life and not needing Their position is weak on corruption. People say things like that. I think that, I think See, that's, that's the part of the debate where I'm like, oh, so, you just, so we weak on corruption? I wouldn't advocate anyone be weak on corruption. That's that's mm-hmm. what I would bring up. I'm not saying Bree has a bad answer because I didn't hear it all, but that's how you respond in those situations. Oh, Biden did some insignificant fucking thing on labor. Why won't you vote for him? I don't know because I care about human rights. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a, like, that's a like, the, big thing for me. My I care only about reason, you know, I let's care about if I was going to tell him to vote for anything, like, that would be the one. That's the one thing because it's something about union. And Kim Iverson actually tweeted about this. She's like 10 percent of the country. Maybe yeah, I saw that too. Them. I gotta say, yeah. Which, which yeah, it's true. because, and it speaks to what Bree is saying, because she starts to say, people say, if you have this position, you're privileged. This is absolutely a privileged position. Think about it. Everything under the sun that you can have the, that you will be voting for this party for, you're picking National Labor's Reward. Not Medicare yeah. for All, not a $15 yeah. minimum wage, not to stop yeah. police brutality, because none of those things affect you. You know what affect you? This really Maybe. doesn't even affect her. Actually, she that really doesn't affect her either. But, it's, yeah, but it was the only really argument that she could find this. that breathed exactly. in the debunk right in the moment. That exactly. was the only reason. Exactly. <laughs> that's the only thing that they could find. I'm telling you, that's the only thing that they can find that they're using this, this union thing all the time. But we can get back to the... Uh, we can get back Go to the ahead. Hey, why y'all doing I'm going to look up exactly what happened it, with this union situation because that, that was not an explanation. Yeah, go ahead. If, you're, if you believe the path to... Meaningful change is going to primarily come through a kind of, I don't say this dismissively, but a kind of labor incrementalism, meaning there are meaningful labor gains that happen, but labor are not That's a the good type term. of which would radically transform the system the way that some people want to happen in a shorter term. And the way that some people might argue Bernie Sanders represented his movement as as the goal of being, Mm -hmm. then that's a defensible position. But I also, I have to hold space for the reality that there are people for whom, even as significant as those labor gains are, it's simply insufficient. And what they see when they look at the trajectory of the last 50, 60 years of Democratic Party politics, when they look, when they read Listen Liberal, real quick pause, quick pause, the Democratic Party. Brie answered there when she said that the labor gains have been uh, insufficient. You guys understand that's the only excuse we need. Now, Bree's yeah. gonna uh, Bree's gonna continue with more detail, and it's good that she's doing that. But when you when you're pressed by the professional managerial class on why you don't vote for Biden, you simply say all them things you say he did is not sufficient. You don't even have to explain your point at that point. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's don't, it. The don't argue anyway, the accomplishments. Yeah. Don't argue the accomplishment. That's yeah. a great strategy. Don't argue the accomplishment because that's when you get it. That's not that good. That's not good. You just say however level you describe it. Ain't good enough. So if you handed me a $10 million ticket, ain't good enough. Whatever it yeah. is, the point, you get the point that I'm making, whatever it is, it is not good enough because that is the truth. A national labor board n- is not good enough. And you know what else is not good enough? If Trump is elected, he's going to damage a, a democracy. That's not yeah. a good enough answer anymore. Sorry, because we have all lived through both presidency. This is the p- selling point, uh, Nico, to your point. You were kind of talking about this earlier. This is why they're not going to be able to sell this. We live through both both presidencies and we can tangibly feel with numbers and see statistics the Joe Biden presidency is worse. Yeah. How are you? It's, it's this reality. is literally not an arguable point. It's literally not an arguable point. 
We're talking about ICE hear- funding. We're talking about uh, 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 military industrial complex funding. We're talking about uh, minimum wage. We're talking about corruption. We're talking about march to war, march to nuclear war, like everything. He is literally measurably worse. So that is no longer a selling point. Go ahead, Nico. You were going to chime in. And I was just going to say, because when Biden was running and people forget, they're going to say, oh, Trump's going to blame Obama for what he had to dig himself out of. But now, but Biden has spent the last three years blaming Trump for what he had to dig himself out of. But the difference was, I didn't necessarily feel that like with Trump, everything was regressing like at the same time. It like what I thought Trump could have done this much damage in eight years. That's what I thought. I'm like, <laughs> okay, if it's going, he's going to do damage, but it's going to take about a good eight years because he just don't got the he don't got the acumen, he don't got the network to make it happen. And he's way too like he's way too uh, he's like a roller coaster emotion. Like he might praise John Bolton one day and the motherfuckers fired and roasting him on Twitter <laughs> the next day. You can't get anything done in the administration, which for America might be the best goddamn thing to happen at this point. It's like just just try to stop the bleeding at this point. But yeah. like the the people like Crystal will allow Biden to blame the failures of his administration that they've aided in uh, on Trump. And oh, what about the last four years of Trump? Like, yeah, that shit was bad. But like, bro, this is cr- this is insane. We are on the brink of World War Three, and I I don't know if it's gonna be a coup in Africa, a, a nuclear fucking bomb going off in Ukraine, and like, and either one of those things happen is directly a result of the Biden administration a lot of times. Yeah. So like, taking. Let's get to you. Thanks, Nico. Let's get to you. Sorry, guys. There Making a concerted choice to back away from labor in a way that has gone on for decades and isn't necessarily turning around as a consequence of Joe Biden having some good NLRB appointments. Exactly. So, so let me actually. Ahead, you let respond, me actually, and then I want to jump into the it. So, this is one. I don't think. Yeah. So, uh, uh, after hearing her her response, because I did this is my first time seeing this, CJ. She just easily dismantles Crystal right there. Like that's a that's a fantastic answer by Brie overall. But sorry, CJ, look, uh, I'll pass you to continue. That's a great answer. Like massively increasing union density. I actually don't see that as incremental change. I mean, if you look at the chart of the decline in the middle class and the decline of union density, no, I, you'd be hard pressed to find I, I, I a more so significant. The difference. average I, worker I, who is like, struggling would see that as incremental change because their life is not improving immediately, <laughs> right? So okay, Crystal is a right millionaire. She's like, well, I don't see this thing as incremental change because your material conditions is irrelevant. You're a millionaire. Right. If you're an average worker and you see this boring and you like, there's a theoretical change, that's 100% incremental change at best, at best. But anyway, let's continue. Sorry. I went, I'll, I'll let it play for a bit. As well. But the other piece is, I feel like those same people who are right about the Democratic Party. They were right, you know, right about the analysis and listen liberal, right about the fact that you had, you know, this free trade bipartisan consensus and in large part a union busting bipartisan consensus. Also don't acknowledge that there actually has been a notable shift in the Biden administration. Now, my no. big issue with the Biden administration, I mean, there's a million of them, right? On foreign policy, I've got problems. But my biggest issue economically with the Biden administration is the way they've allowed the pandemic relief, the short-term pandemic mm-hmm. relief programs to fall away and mm-hmm. leave a lot of ordinary Americans more in a more precarious financial position now than they were so at the beginning you, wait, of the wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Not- So if you're one of those Americans... That Crystal is describing. So Crystal described people that the Biden administration wronged. Why would you vote for Biden if you're one of the people that she's describing there? It makes no sense for you to do that, but let's continue. Like that it doesn't make Not sense nothing. for you to vote but for when someone I look who at the long life term. over. Let's continue. Term. When I look at the fact that, listen, with the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, with the CHIPS Act, with infrastructure investment, you're talking oh, about Jesus industrial Christ. policy in a way that would have been Bro. completely unheard of in the Clinton-Obama oh, era. Who cares? Hey, y'all, I, 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 I got to interrupt. I got to interrupt. Y'all need to hear this Go bullshit ahead. from you. This Go one. Okay, ahead. so this is what it is. It says, if in the run-up to or during the election, the employer commits an unfair labor practice such as illegally firing pro-union workers, which has become Ukraine, you, excuse me, routine in nearly every such election over the past 40 years, as penalties have been negligible, the board will order the employer to recognize the union and enter forthwith into bargaining. I need to tell y'all something, guys. Motherfucker, that's what a strike is. They're telling y'all that the union workers can go on strike. And, and <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what a strike is. Uh, it, so they try, to, they, try, the they try to skip that step. It, it says that they're going to recognize it. The, the employer 
it would the board will order the employer to recognize the union and then they go into bargaining. That's yeah, literally how fucking strikes work. That is what happened with Kellogg's. They screwed over some, they screwed over some people, then they fired some people for standing up for the people that were screwed over as far as the, the, the transition from a regular like there's like love, there's like levels to the union worker stuff. So there's like th that's what was happening. And they strike and until till they they went back to the collective bargaining table three or four times, yeah. and then eventually the Kellogg's workers and the union workers got what they wanted. Like, motherfucker, hey. you didn't need a union board or a fucking excuse me, a yeah. labor board to give union workers permission to strike. Yeah, and they didn't say yeah. accept the contract, they said begin bargaining. So if, if that if that employer is firing people who try to organize a union, do you think they're gonna bargain in good faith and good faction? Now they bring it up here by Sam. Great comment, Sam, because you, you brought this to my attention. Where are the penalties? So there's no it, penalties it, for that? But go ahead, Nothing go. in that fucking statement says that the person who was wrongfully fired will not be rehired. Yes. No. Yes. God damn it. So, and and, and the, the, the other thing, the other that. thing, great point. the other thing with the information at Nico, let's, let's supply it practically. Now, if you're trying to form a union and this happens to you, you're going to immediately get a union. How many people are trying to form a union right now? Trying to form one? You, maybe she, like... Yeah, she's trying. But the point I'm trying to make is that yeah. in in order for this to be a thing, you have to already be had enough people at your at your uh, job to already start the process of unionizing. You know how that's not going on massively everywhere? There are unions forming. Like like Amazon Union, but she tried mm -hmm. to make it seem like every industry is unionizing. Yeah. Or let me say it a different way: she makes it seem like if we do this, then every industry is just going to automatically get unionized. Yeah. That's not how it. That's not how it goes. Because even before they decide to unionize, like when I was working for Bank of America for Verizon, do you know they have anti-union training? Even when you're not even when you're not even trying to form a union, they're trying to stop it already. Oh yeah, that's true. already that's trying true. to stop it. So they're already dissuading workers from starting unions. So how does how is this significant? Is what I'm saying. In other words, this is only significant is if every place is trying to unionize, and that's and then they had to get fired. Not the and then, case. And then, yes. and then the management had to fire the workers trying to organize, right? Yeah, like, right. and, and then on top of that, like the the worker, like they're they if they're part of a union, they could sue whatever. But like we've seen, especially for the major unions, like if you have that level of of influence, like with Kellogg's, that was different. They had influence, and their unions were organized to strike across the country and even in a different country. I think it was in Mexico. So like that happened. So what happens if you're a small union? Right. And by this, by this penalty, which there isn't any, like, oh, you're gonna go back to the collective bargaining table and get what? Do you're not holding exactly. them accountable for anything. You're just saying, oh, recognize the union. Well, they tried that and now they fired somebody else. And then they fired somebody else. So at what point, yeah. like it's be it'll be better for people yes, to work through point. court if you're not in the right to work state. And you know what the loophole is? Just don't fire them, give them two hours a week. Yes. Facts. Just yes. don't fire them. Just don't fire them. That's it. All right, let's get well, back to the video. Have, so there is like a standard of like, uh -huh. if they're full time, some states you have a minimum for them to be considered full time. Oh, okay. If you have them, so like they're they're like so they're like I said, the the worker themselves individually, based off of this, has more rights. Like I could go to like the courts and sue them for whatever if they wrongfully fired me. I could sue them and win money. Could it take a little bit more time? Yeah, maybe not as much time as it would take to strike, depending on what the unions looking like, and I might get better results. But at the end of the day, for her to make this large leap, saying this is one of the most pro labor policies or pro labor, just like what in in what lifetime? In what lifetime, bro? This is this that this is the shit I be talking about. Now it happened eight days ago or so. That's why Bree probably wasn't privy to exactly what they were going to hit her yeah. with. And and it isn't like Crystal did a good job explaining it. And then when they don't do a good job explaining it, but they feel the need to push it as a point, this is always the reason why. Because if you explained it, then everybody would know that's bullshit. Yeah. Yep. For me, but also his antitrust appointments and the fact they're really trying to reverse God. decades of neoliberal attack on any sort of trust busting. I feel uh, like none of those improvements trust. that have made Biden on the, that front way better than Obama, way better than Clinton. I just feel like there's no willingness to acknowledge any of that whatsoever.
How does oh, that serve the issue is acknowledging it. How does that serve how us? much it matters to you? Why do we have to acknowledge mm -hmm. yeah. what they why is that a thing? Go ahead, Nick. Acknowledge the ruling class, you peasants. Acknowledge how they improved. Praise them. Once again, what question do we always ask? How does this serve us? How does us acknowledging you doing your very basic job at best? How does that serve us? How does that put us in a better negotiation? A position for us to be like, oh, Biden, you're doing such a great job. Oh, thank you for being better than Reagan, Biden. Thank you for being better than Clinton, <laughs> Biden. How does that serve us? They only serve you, Crystal, because you're trying no. to bootleg around these, these rolling. Why would you, the 90% of people, people who are not in unions acknowledge this super not important thing that he's done with unions and vote for him? Why would you acknowledge it? That's not like, okay, and if I acknowledge it, bitch, I'm still not going to vote for him. What the fuck? Like, what does it matter? <laughs> that is to you. And how much you see those kind of meaningful, fine, call them meaningful improvements as really core to the, the nature of the project that you're on. And I think that what some people are frustrated by is that this went from feeling like in both left media and left politics, a bigger revolutionary project that was going yes, to the right. core of our capitalist system and wanting to radically change the way that human lives are valued, what we consider to be the nature of our social safety net, what we believe to be the nature of what we consider to be human rights. And they wanted to join a movement that validated what many of us felt intrinsically, emotionally for most of our lives, that something in the milk very much wasn't clean. And Bernie came along and articulated that we were it was legitimate for us to be asking for something more. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, it does feel as Absolutely. though there has been a kind of a bait and switch. It's not that what you're describing yes. isn't true or legitimate. And I said this on my, my podcast. If your priorities are what you have kind of articulated your priorities as being, switch. I think it's a perfectly legitimate argument. But I have to hold space for the fact that for many people, it simply is inadequate. Wait, but let me... Kind of Rage's fucking body backed her right there. That, <laughs> that was... She said the bait and switch part is perfect because bait and yeah, switch is do. literally what Kyle and Crystal just did. And, and yep. this is why Bri is a much better debater than me. She's way better at me than this. She's also because nicer she because like they, she's conceding on points that she doesn't even really have to concede on. She's like, well, this is like, first of all, like what you said isn't true, but like she accepts a lot of their premises and then turns it against them, which is a good strategy. Like she's like, okay, even if I gave you all that, like what the fuck does it matter to these voters? She's yes, like, okay. yes. <laughs> which is a good argument because they can't, they the never really more challenge effective. that. She's a and more they effective say, what about debater. These? The trust and first of all, what's she what's she talking about? He's where is she getting this idea that the Biden administration has been like anti trust or big trust? Where is she getting that from? Because she, read, she read some she read some article. What she what they went and did, just like they found this labor thing. All they're doing, they're going, let's find a reason. That's literally what happened. We need to find a reason to give. And this nonsense, that's why it seems like, man, these are some obscure things because they had to go digging. <laughs> they had to go digging for this shit to find reasons. But let's get back to the video. I got about 20 minutes, fellas. You yeah, can yeah. continue let's, after let's me, play, of course, let's but let's, video, let's play yeah. a little good chunk of this here. Respond. Yeah, let, me, let me jump in here. So my issue is that many people on the left are, I would say, dishonestly oh, to refusing there. to acknowledge any good things that were done. We could all on the left list, like, here's the 57 things we hate that Biden did. But when something good happens, I'm the only one talking about it. And then I... If, this if is I'm what, an this, this shows I'm privilege. This shows all, privilege right here because all, if... Because hey, he's saying... Point of order. Point of yeah. information. Fucking, you're not fucking leftist. You're a liberal. So that's why you feel like you're the only one. There's a plenty of liberals talking about it, including you. You know what I'm saying? You're like, I'm the only one talking about it. Bitch, because you're not leftist. Maybe you should go home to your fucking people. Like, <laughs> we're being real about it. Sorry, go ahead. But what I, what I was going to say, it, it's a, it, this, is, this is another point of privilege because what he's yeah. saying is, he's saying is, you, person who doesn't make enough money, who's working ends me, why aren't you giving them credit for this stuff over here that means something to me? Yeah, yes. he's not giving you money to yes. feed your family, but why aren't you caring about this stuff over here? This paperwork over here, this fax machine. Why don't you care about this stuff? What's wrong with you, leftist? If you cared about this stuff, wouldn't you? Don't you care? You're supposedly a leftist while you can't make your ends meet. It is completely a, a, a view from a person who has everything already. They need, and you can also, see it every time they ride in a car. Go ahead. Also, isn't it the same Kyle who used to get really upset when people wouldn't credit Trump with the few things that he did good? Yep. Yeah. Kyle and now Kyle. all of a sudden, Kyle pretends like none of those things happened in order to defend the two things that he's claiming Biden has done well. Like, w there's no consistency, bro. Like, that's why nobody like believes shit you say. 
Like, so once again, if Biden's accomplishments does not change your life for the better, if you don't feel it immediately, why should you give them a, a, a accomplishment? Why should you give them praise? Are we required to praise our overlords, Cal? To the peasants fucking look to the east and bow to Joe Biden or some shit? Like, what, <laughs> what are you what are you advocating for? Are we, are, it, this is a level yeah, of... Yeah, a thousand people. Y'all better like that goddamn no video. Yeah, a thousand if people you, watching right now. Y'all better like this video. Stop playing. I yeah, you like guys gotta like this video. We have fun. But if, if you're an advocate of human rights, like I am, if you're an advocate for peace, like I am, because I personally see no fucking reason to get in politics only for yourself. If you only this shit for yourself, nigga, do some push-ups, meditate, improve <laughs> your life, improve your diet, do some self improvement shit if you only care about yourself to me that's a complete waste of your time if you're only in politics to advocate for yourself that's just my personal fundamental belief that no one can change that's why i'm in politics if i want to prove my life i'll do shit to prove my life personally i want to i want to better i want to improve human rights i want humans to evolve i want us to look back at my where I was before I was born and after I died, I'm like, damn, humanity got better. Because what other point in life is there other than that? Than to leave this planet and society better to our grandkids than where we left it, right? I want my niece's grandchildren to be like, God damn, they put in work for us. What other reason to be in politics is there than that, Cal? So if there's an enemy of human rights like Joe Biden, an enemy to my community, of course I'm going to focus on that instead of some shit he should be doing because that's his job in the first place. He's like, oh my, Cal, like, man, Joe Biden is doing his job, so thank God he's doing his job. Ignore all the evil shit he's doing. Nigga, are you hey, looking at a serial killer? But, you, like, man, but you're not, but you're not, but you're not understanding, Nick. He, his board, like pass some cool union policies that really don't do anything. So I don't understand why you keep ignoring these things. Like, <laughs> what? They're not important to you? Are you? You're not in a union? Because like the majority of the countries in the union, they're not. The majority of the countries are not in the union. First of all, and and but I know I just 100. I'm 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 just watching. I'm just listening to you. That's all. I'm not looking at. It, I'm just listening to you because I 100 agree. Like at the end of the day, with, <laughs> this whole shit of. But you want it, the leftists won't acknowledge the good. Why you only want the leftists to acknowledge because so you can feel like you have a little club forming around you, so you don't feel right. fucking ridiculous about the advocacy for Biden that you've been pushing lately. Like that's why you're upset because people, other people aren't saying it. Because like materialistically speaking, like what is it? Does it matter to you? Like does it matter to Biden? What does it matter if we don't acknowledge it? What does it do? It may may perhaps stop people from voting for Biden. Okay. And what does that do for those people who aren't acknowledge it? It doesn't do a goddamn thing for me. If you don't vote for Biden, like, and we get Trump, like, it doesn't really hurt me or help me at this at this juncture. In fact, some if you're maybe uh, somebody who is in you, excuse me, a victim of the the war in Ukraine or the Eastern Front or a victim of how NATO powers have acted in Africa, like, maybe just maybe you think that it's actually better to have Trump for them, yeah. right? So like. I don't, I just don't, I'm not a fan of this whole, like, oh, acknowledge. I'll, I'll, first of all, I'll acknowledge what the fuck oh, I choose hey, to Hey, hey, Nico, you know what they're telling us? They, what they're saying essentially is, hey, at least the train's running on time. And it's not, first of all. That is what, if these right? motherfuckers have been Germany in 1940s, these motherfuckers are like, you guys keep bringing up these things about Hitler, but at least the train's run on time. The train on time, bro. Hey, not the whole time, I'm not going to talk about the fact that motherfucking gas chamber in the goddamn yeah. train. <laughs> that's anyway, that's the professional man. used to be in a DNC show. Now, I, I'm not, I'm not like, look, I'm not blind. I think in order to- now, We got to hear what he says right there, at, and we'll continue. Let me just hear what he says, because we were talking I'm the only one talking about it, and then I get accused of being a DNC show. Now, I, I'm not I'm not like, look, I'm not blind. I think in order to be intellectually honest, you have to look at here's the good things that happen. Here's the bad thing that happened. I'm going to give them all to you. And then you could judge how much you value each and which one you weigh more and how that factors into your you like, don't do analysis. that. That is but something that like you absolutely do not do. You yeah, absolutely do not do that for sure. We report on every single ounce of Biden corruption. Cal Kalinske does not. Cal Kalinsky does not report on the corruption regarding the Ukraine war. Did, Biden, did he report on the fact that Biden sent nuclear submarines to Australia and South Korea? So, and so what Cal Kalinsky is saying here, even though I reject the premise, he is guilty of. <laughs> he's guilty of the same thing he's saying you should do. He said you should report the good and report the bad. He absolutely do not report on stuff that he's report doing. anything on Biden's foreign policy. Absolutely. So anyway, let, let's continue. We, I know we were short on time. 
There's so much talk about that last part, but we let play a little bit more. Jesus. As like, he's the purity tester. He's like the main purity tester guy. And I didn't vote for Biden in 2020 because I didn't think he would pass my purity test. Now, at the time, people could go back and watch the video. My purity test was super fucking lenient. It was like, if, if I'm convinced you're going to do like two or three of the things that I value highly, then I would vote for you. Because I know it's basically down to just the Democrat and the Republican, no matter how much we want to wish the Green Party or Libertarians want to wish the Libertarian Party into existence. And so the professional managerial class is trying to convince you not to vote on your policy beliefs, for you are to vote on something else other than that. Isn't that what they're advocating right here? He's he's mm -hmm. he's saying that Joe Biden did all these other things, even though he's counter to all your other beliefs. That's the part we haven't added to this conversation. It's, it, yep. it's not like Biden is for our beliefs and he's not delivering. He's counter to Medicare for all. The, the thing that you both are saying is the number one issue. He is saying he will veto that. How do they explain that? How do they explain? They go, so this is what they're saying. The professional managerial class is always willing to sell you out. They're saying for NLRB, we'll just have a little nuclear war. We'll have a little, <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? A little homeless population going up. Like that's the trade-off. The trade-off hey. for the NLRB, we're going to have all this other bad stuff. That's not a good trade-off. Cop City. And it's, we go have ahead, Cop City. Go ahead. Exactly. Imagine Another if, one. Go ahead. Imagine if, because Kyle keeps talking about like not acknowledging this and not acknowledging that and Green Party has no chance, whatever. Imagine how much more of a chance they would have 10 years from now or 10 years ago if people with platforms like Chris and Kyle have just called out Democrats and the Republicans bullshit yeah. equally instead of pretending like one's better than the other. Just imagine all the people you could influence. Like, that's why, like, if you're saying that they don't, they don't have a chance outside of just, just pure strategy, okay, I, I, that, I can't accept to some degree. But I also acknowledge the reason why. And it's because of people like you. It's because of people like Crystal. It's because of people like Kyle. It's because of people like, you know, people who keep pretending like running in the Democratic Party is like a legitimate strategy, even though we know at this point it isn't because it's, you know, it's just they're going to cheat. That's what it is. Like, imagine if you called all of that out to the degree that you call out Republicans or Trump. How far would we be policy wise? Not even at fuck the federal level. I'm not even talking about the presidency. Imagine how much work we could have gotten done. How many more RBNs do we see on the ground doing mutual aid? five, six, seven years ago, if we would be tell talking, telling the truth about the Democrats and Republicans evenly across the board back then. Yeah, yeah let's continue. All right, let's get continue with the video. And so when I look at the record, again, I can list all the bad things, but you just mentioned the NLRB raising overtime pay, or you mentioned the thing where, you know, they automatically yeah, recognize yeah. the union if the bosses yeah. try to bust it up. There's also the overtime pay it's rule, where now it's not $33,000, it's about $55,000 a year, where now you get uh, overtime pay. That's Man. a huge, huge change. Student loan debt reduction, and even Biden even coming back after the Supreme Court tried to slap it down, and he said, no, I'm going to try to do it through the Higher Education Act now. There's little things we could go after by the interest rate. Yes, even that's bad. I agree with you on that. Fact but we got to recognize that that is, all things considered, a step in the right direction. Pulling out of Afghanistan, he actually had the balls to do it, even when the media was- Oh, Jesus the Christ. Street. And I didn't see anybody- So, pause. Man, see, this is where I would have a hard time maintaining my composure from, Bree, because he just says, he gives Biden credit for Afghanistan, fam. So, once again, lying by omission is a thing. You guys realize that because of the sanctions by Afghanistan, there's estimate more people going to die by that than the entirety of the Afghanistan war, in terms of the yeah. uh, government officials. Joe Biden stole billions of money from Afghanistan civilians and citizens. And they and the Biden administration has been very open about why they're doing this, Nico and CJ. They say they are doing this because they want the Afghanistan people to overthrow the illegitimate government of the Taliban. So essentially what Biden is doing is starving the Afghanistan people because they are throwing a tantrum because they lost the war to the Taliban. They want the people to be upset. The Taliban at the U.S. Government. funding. The Taliban at the U.S. Also, we don't give this motherfucker Absolutely. credit for for pulling us out of a war that he can like he chose to go in. Yeah. Like so, because you put out the fire, you started like what you didn't even really put out. <laughs> you, you picked up the fucking logs and just lit, lit the fire next to the whole fire. Like that's, that's all you did. But like, and this is a good also, comment by Bad Cookies. I just see this comment. Good comment, Bad Cookies. Uh, because Kyle was making an argument that Biden is so much better than Trump, but this credit he getting regarding the Afghanistan exit was Trump's plan. 
Like Biden continued. And, and know that, and that wasn't Trump's plan. Actually, Trump's plan was better, actually. And the neo he could never get it done because the neoliberals that were in his fucking his administration and remember yeah, they, on, on, on CNN, uh, they were coming out here for yeah. trying to pull out of Afghanistan. They yeah. were attacking him for it. They tanked stocks because of that shit. And so that the, the, the so that the the you know the the black rocks of the world would put pressure on his his administration to then pressure him to stay in Afghanistan. Like that's just like once again, that's lying by omission. You had like Biden, Biden one had a plan to leave because he was fighting, he didn't want to leave. If people remember the debates, he was in, he was attacking Trump, saying that there was gonna be a power yeah. vacuum that the power, Taliban would take advantage of, but like at the same time, that's all for that's our fault too. There was a way to there was a way to strategically exit. He did not take it, he did not do it right. But even when it was going to be done right under Trump, Biden fought against it. And his and neoliberals and Democrats fought against it. So once again, it's lying by omission. All right. Well, let's continue. Anybody on the left coming into his, his defense at that well, point? I saw a lot of people. Have, I was like the, the only fucking one. It was like me and Matt Iglesias. I definitely here. Okay, yeah. well, yeah. and it's like three people. I didn't. And all these. Oh, I'm so anti-war, anti-war. He pulls out of Afghanistan, and it gets it gets messy because that's what happens when you pull out of wars. And all of a sudden, oh my god, you know, it's. it's I so you're anti-war cow. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold on. You're anti-war cow, but you don't care about Biden stealing the funds of the Afghanistan government. You don't you don't care about the sanctions that Afghanistan put on. How many how many panels have we done with the International Leftist Coalition with the anti-war summits? Well, we explain to you guys that economic war is hot war. Sanctions no have impacted no people the same way that hot war does. So, so right. Cal, the person who claims is anti-war, don't care about sanctions at all. They're not part of his analysis at all. But you wagging your finger at real anti-imperialists who look at the, the entire picture? Jesus fuck. This is why they will never debate me. Because that's how dare you to fucking mention Afghanistan around me as a praise <laughs> for Biden? Son, are you serious? But anyway, let's go. So, and Nico, we can good, good on you because oh. we, were, we almost resented it and kind of were enjoying the extent to which he was getting, you know, dogpiled by the mainstream media. And we were the only ones defending him. So I, I would quibble with that a little bit. I but didn't I think see much defending him. I Kyle, really didn't. Kyle, Who what people are responding to, if I, if I can offer this, is not the idea that you are accurately describing advancements, good things that Joe Biden is doing. I think you could also say Obama did some good things. No, uh, Biden is way better than Obama, not even close. That's what? Not Whoa. Whoa. Oh. One is wow. better than the other. You could also sit what? here and say, oh, oh God. Oh, wait, oh, God. CJ, play this God. part, because I've seen this God. part. Well, go back like 10 seconds and play this part, because I want to show you guys this, if anything else, because Bree dismantles him right here. Play, play the last 10 seconds. I, let this play, listen to this part. I actually saw this part. Bree yeah, let me know when it's up. Yeah. Yeah, listen, listen advancements, good things that Joe Biden is doing. I think you could also say Obama did some good things. No, you know? Biden is way better than Obama, that's not even that, close. That's not the point I'm making. Okay. It's not that one is Listen. better than the other. You could also sit here and say Obama did good things. Now, the way you bristled at me oh, saying that, I can say, oh, I want you to acknowledge right that Obama there. did good things. And Cal doesn't realize you're saying that leftist. Because remember the list I made about Joe Biden's crimes? And we're saying as a as a Advocate of human rights and peace, I will never support Joe Biden because of that. But that's essentially the argument that Cal is making. If you listen, if you talk to Obama supporter, they'd be like, hey, you know, Obamacare did this, you know, this person did this. That's, that's essentially true. what Cal is doing with Joe Biden. He said, ignore all the bad stuff that Joe Biden did because of a few stuff that he did. That would breed nails him on. He said, well, technically, can you, can you say that about Trump, uh, Barack Obama? And then, then Cal, like, no, you can't. No, absolutely. You, you can't. Like, why can't you not say that? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Anyway, so I won't point that out because. Bree actually dismantles him right there, completely calls him out on his hypocrisy. And Kyle's walk, Kyle walked right into that. But we, we two, thi two things real quick I want to say about that. The fact that he immediately jumped to this whole uh uh oh no, B Obama's way better than Biden. It's like, what the fuck, bro? First of all, she didn't argue that. And but they yeah. always they try to do the immediate they immediately go into the, the to the yes. defense mode. Like, the defense mode, yeah. That's a great which point. Which first of all, like I don't know if that's objectively true because the bad foreign policy that Obama had was actually led by Biden. So people seem to forget that. But hmm. even aside, why don't we do this shit where you go, Obama was way better, way better than Biden? What what the fuck? First of all, how? Why do y'all always do this thing where they jump? This is the most, you know, progressive policy of our lifetime. This is mm -hmm. so way better than a hundred times but like bro, y'all just use these colorful always hyperbole. Yeah, like without yeah. ever like I, like do you know what these words mean? Like if he yeah. was better, like even if Biden was better, which literally he's not, like because at least Biden wouldn't give money like weapons to neo-Nazis whenever excuse me, not Biden, when, at least Obama, like that was one of his red lines with Ukraine, like bro, like bro, I'm doing a lot. Like I just can't get fucking neo-Nazis missiles. Like I just can't do that. I'm not cool with it. <laughs> like at least that, but they always use this hyperbole because they don't actually I don't I won't have to use hyperbole to describe one policy being better than the next. 
It's just not like I don't have to do that. But they have to, and they never have a follow up for after after the hyperbole that they use. They never have a follow up, and it exposes themselves every time. And like like Nick said, like Bree destroyed him on that. Yeah, absolutely. When acknowledge, they bristle when you acknowledge that Biden did good things. And it's because we have different standards and we're making different yeah. kinds of comparisons. But that's not my issue because they're not even minute. acknowledging the good things, but, is my point. But, I have a list of 47 things here. And I've heard man. nobody talk about it. Obama, Obama supporters can but say the same thing. This is why Bree dismantled point. him because Obama mm -hmm. supporters can say the same thing. If you're an Obama supporter, you can, you can say, man, you guys always worry about the drone strikes. But what, can you admit Obamacare did something for someone somewhere? Like, that's the same <laughs> the Obama supporter said. The same exact uh, one. <laughs> and if we're being real, Obamacare is also the the the, the reason that Obamacare is like problematic because of the problem that's causing right now. Like it was always a front to help insurance companies constantly have an excuse to increase rates and then lock you in, like so you can't yeah. leave or you can't survive without Obamacare, right? So like there's that. But 